Hi everyone, welcome, welcome back. We took a little bit of a break so that I could go on vacation. And yes, indeed, I was in the beautiful paradise of Hawaii. I was on the island of Kauai. It was amazing. I feel so um, blessed to have been uh, fortunate enough to, to be there for nine days. So we saw flowers and waves and dolphins and uh, fish and got sun and it was just amazing from start to finish. It was just uh, an incredible trip. So thank you guys for for hang, hang, holding space for me and hanging out and waiting for me to get back and joining me again today. Really excited to be back and digging into my painting practice and digging into seeing what all of you guys have been up to. It's really pretty incredible. It's super fun. Um, co oh, a couple things I want to share with you what, what I've been up to. Oh, and one thing that I found, I was in a little little gift shop in Hanapipe, which is a beautiful little art community on Kauai. And I found this amazing book. It's called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. And Apparently, this is something that is really um, ubiquitous, and um, this book is really popular, but I wasn't familiar with it. And I find these drawings in here to be just incredible. I absolutely adore the drawings. Of course, it reminds me of Winnie the Pooh, and it definitely has that, that feel to it, but the drawings are just just absolutely amazing. Let me see if I can find some that are in particular. They're just the line quality and the gesture of them. It's um, just super, super cool. And I've, I've been doing some new work where I'm really focusing on line quality. And so this really was, uh, resonated with me very much. I, and these are just so, so beautiful. So if you have an opportunity to get a hold of a copy of this, um, I would recommend it and just enjoy because it's so much in here to, to enjoy. I love these tonal studies. Just incredible. And of course I've been doing animals and the horses, so uh, also love to see how he's done the, the the critters and all of this beautiful thick and thin line calligraphy all this so cool so check this one out the boy the mole the fox and the horse by charlie mac macasey m-a-c-k-e-s-y so really really cool all right so there's that and the other thing I want to talk about is we're having a sale on two of my oil painting workshops. Um, Still Life in Oil and Oil Painting for Anybody. These two workshops are really both really in-depth. Oil Painting for Anyone, Anybody, <laughs> it really is for anyone. And anyone just wanting to get started in oil painting or painting at all, it I'm really proud of both of those workshops, the oil painting workshops. Oil painting for anybody has some really foundational uh, exercises to get you going and then landscape subject matter and a really in-depth section on mixing, in-depth section on oil techniques to really get you going and understand that fat over lean thing, which is really important in oil painting. So there's a lot to oil painting for anybody. And Still Life in Oil, also super in-depth workshop. I talk about point of view and setting up a still life, choosing objects, how to do the lighting, how to do the, the setup. And all, all of that is in Still Life in Oil. And the projects are really in-depth in that workshop as well. So those are on sale for 10 days, so check it out. Go to the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and check those out. I think fall is a per perfect time to dig out the oil paints um, because, it, it just, I don't know, there's something about oil painting. It just feels like you want to just go inside and 
and still life is such a wonderful uh, subject to dig into for the fall and winter months and it's kind of endless you can do still lifes till the cows come home and still not still not really touch on all the possibilities so I'll be digging into that also I've been doing some oil painting with the heads and these are some of my examples because you guys might have seen my procreate portraits and I'm wanting to take those into traditional media so I kind of I'm, I'm intending to do and I have done a few pastels I will do that but uh, I really felt like starting with um, these monochromatic oil oil paintings of heads would be a good way to go so I've been really having fun with that so uh, oil paint there's something really really cool about cool about it I know a lot of you guys are pastelists and pastels only but I really highly encourage you to check out some other media because it all feeds together and plays together and especially when it comes to a painting medium like oil or acrylic that that really intensive learning and study of mixing color there's nothing like it there's really nothing like it so um check those out check those two workshops out and again those are going to be on sale for about 10 days all right so these are really fun i love her um i so th these are done um with just one color and then i'm pulling out the the lights i'm using a little gamsol to pull out the lights on this um, on these tone boards these are just inexpensive canvas boards just to practice just practicing these two these are inexpensive canvases these are both acrylics real fun kind of getting in there dynamic get getting in there with some thicker paint playing with the color a bit so super super fun just practicing all right let me set these aside And we'll get to today's demo, which I selected a, a photograph of a Kauai sunset. And um, <laughs> after I selected it, honestly, I'm like, why did I pick that one? Um, it's got those God rays, which are really amazing. It was an amazing sunset, really, truly, standing there. Uh, but the photograph itself is to me um uh, the the palette's kind of sort of unusual and kind of restrained in a kind of interesting way um and let's take a look at this photo before we get going and i've got my little you know color isolator here i selected the first of all i selected this light green pastel mat because i think this photo has a tremendous amount of green in it. Like if we isolate this up here, that's that's green. <laughs> and so so are so is this in here. And if we look over here at what we would consider blue sky, hmm, it's not very blue if we if we isolate it with this this kind of cool gray. It's not very blue. It's maybe, it's closer to this, but it's not even that. If you compare that and that, this is much more gold. We get in here right where the sun is and there's some pop of color and we're definitely gonna wanna um, get into our palette and really exaggerate some of this color, get that to be really orange. And so we want this to be nice and bright. All right. The, the other thing about this, I've got this cropping here. It's super central. So I'm just going to go for that. Um, so rather kind of simple, one might even say uh, rather boring <laughs> composition. And I thought that when I, when I looked at it this morning, I thought, hmm, why did I choose that? I'm not so wild about the composition. But it's got some other redeeming factors, obviously. It's that sky is beautiful, the clouds are beautiful. So I, I think I'm gonna try to pull it off. 
um, the edges of the clouds have got some really interesting stuff happening on them. So that's cool. Um, going to keep it on the smaller side today. I had thought about getting in there and doing something larger for you today, but um, we have a, a critique stream right after this for the monthly people. So um, I thought, well, I better make it manageable for myself. Getting back, getting back into it um, after my little um, vacation. So, all right. So let me get my hair up and we'll get going on this guy. Oh, yeah. Show the flowers. So, yeah, that's we went to a couple of really beautiful um, gardens, botanical gardens. It was amazing. Um, Waimea Canyon, we hiked Waimea Canyon. We went to the Nepali coast and saw dolphins and fish and it was just gorgeous. So all kinds of inspiration and I'll be sharing much, much more of my my reference photos and everything with you guys. So it was, it was definitely a great relax. And I definitely took time off. I really did. And I don't do that. I'm not very good at that. And I did it. I really did it. I really relaxed. And, um, I, I, I didn't really even get on Facebook with you guys very much at all. I just really, I really took time off, which is, Pretty cool. Again, really hard for me to do. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get a little bounding box here and I want to um, get my horizon nice and level with the um, picture plane here. So I'm going to go ahead with my triangle and I'm going to keep it pretty small down here that I don't need. Get it nice and straight. One thing you can do is you can put dots like this across and then connect it like instead of ruling with the, if you don't want to um, have it be quite so much of a hard line, either way, but that's one way of doing that. But I'm going to go ahead and rule it so get it across all right and then i don't need a whole lot but i think i do want to say something about the island over here this little shape here and then there's another island way back but um i'm not sure i'll get that in and then just some little indication of these cloud shapes. Just kind of for rough placement. I've got this in here. And if I use kind of a faceted straight edge lines to say it, it kind of helps me just get the mass in rather than thinking too much about the contour just yet. And then these, whoo, these really crazy rays going out. Okay, I think that's enough to get me going. And I have in mind that I'm going to um, do an alcohol wash on this. So um, with that in mind, I think I'll start out with a little bit of pastel, a few colors and um, see what happens. 
thinking about that. Actually, I want to go a little bit darker. That feels a little too dark to me. Because the reason it feels a little too dark is because I know that, um, and I don't want to feel the tooth of this too much because I'm going to move this around with the alcohol and I don't need to put too much pastel down. So this is a kind of dark olivey green. I believe it's a Terry Ludwig. With a um, blue spruce. It was a blue spruce. Yeah. Do a little drawing of the shape. But that could have been done um, with a, a pencil even. Or a um, char char stick of charcoal. Really, it's. And then moving down here, I'm going to switch to this. This is kind of a grade blue. And I'm going to leave that area right there, the paper, where that sun's going to be. Coming down here for the water. Because I've got this, this stick in my hand and it's relatively a, close in value to what I want and, and somewhat on the hue as well. So I'll just use it. Okay, so now, now that we've got that, how about some of that, that gold color? gold orange so i'm i'm going to want some of these kinds of things at orange and this is this is one of my very favorite kinds of colors this this is a blue earth And bear in mind that as I'm making the marks, I'm really trying to make a variety of kinds of marks. Um, um, some faceted marks, some... So I, I don't want to build my piece with all the same type of mark. That's just uh, me. That's just my kind of style, if you will. I want that variety. And I see this other cloud bank as kind of got this kind of grayish pink to it. And again, I'm, I'm keeping in mind that when I do the alcohol, it's going to darken everything. So I'm going to err a little bit right now on the side of things being um, a little bit lighter than it would be. Okay, let's go ahead and get some nice bright yellow in here. And right there, I'm gonna want that, that glow on the, on the clouds and right here. Only way I'm gonna get it is by the relationships of the colors. Oh, 
Okay. Okay, I, th- I think that that's kind of enough to get me going with the, with the alcohol wash. If you want. Okay. I think that that's good. So that's so I'm gonna get out a, a bristle brush, and um, this is a flat, and I've got my isopropyl alcohol. I like to use seventy percent because it's a little uh, a little easier on the paper than the ninety. And I want to get this wet, but not not terribly wet. So I'm not trying to create a lot of drips and whatnot. I could. And what size paper you're using? No, it's from a pad, though. It's from a pad. Okay. Check. So it's a standard size from the pads. So you can check, we'll check in a minute. When While this is drying, I'll check the size. Honestly, purpose, uh, what's pardon? the purpose of the alcohol wash? The alcohol wash is doing a couple things. It's It's setting this initial layer of pastel into the paper. Uh, in a really nice way. Um, It's giving me the opportunity to get some marks in here that perhaps are a little more um, spontaneous than just the, the pastel alone in that they are, um, you know, I'm getting, I am getting some of that dripping and, And some of the gesture that that I can get with with a a brush mark, but primarily, I think you know the the main thing for me is just setting this pastel this initial layer really nicely into the paper, allowing me to get subsequent layers over the top of these of this layer. And you can see how rich it it becomes already. And see how it's darkened. Really nicely. And I'm going to go ahead and right here, get a little alcohol on there knowing that I'll be able to come back over that and get that later. Okay, I think that's a nice setup. Okay, we want to dry this a little bit. Yeah, let you, Kevin, and I'll cut down the size. I should know it right off the bat, but I don't. Sorry. Oh, here we go. What? Let me get that size for you. Kevin doesn't like it when nothing's on camera. (laughs) 
can hear the we can hear the dog, the neighborhood dog howling, the sirens. Okay, so this is from this pad, and it's 12 by 15 and a half is the size. And so I buy I buy the pastel mat both in the pads and by the sheet, depending on what what I'm wanting to do. Um, I tend to buy um, the the pads that don't have that anthracite, that dark gray, that dark gray. For whatever reason, that dark gray has a little bit different texture to it that is a little grainier. There's something about it that I really don't enjoy. So uh, I don't buy the pads that have that color in it. So if I want um, a color that's in those pads, um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just buy the, sh the sheets of that. Um, yeah, but I, I love this paper. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. All right, Step up there. Let me know if that's the right spot. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Yep, good. All right, let's have at this now. Nice and dry. Thank you, Kevin. Um, all right, so we want to get in here with some other color be a little playful with it. So uh, even though it, it, it has this appearance of this kind of restrained palette, I do want to go ahead and just be, be, you know, be a little playful with it. There's no reason not to. I'm going to get in here. All right, so let's see. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's kind of nice, right? Looking for this little glow right here. All right, so now I'm going ahead and getting some of these really cool And again, I want a nice variety of kinds of marks. And this alcohol wash really has done a nice job of making a, a nice base for everything that I'm putting on top here. All right. Oh, 
school. It's amazing how green the sky is. That's really interesting. Like a little purple. Here. Mm. To be a little darker. Yeah. Uh, how true are the colors to the actual scene? Taking some liberty and jazzing it up a little bit. These, you mean the colors that I'm picking? Not sure what that question is. I'm not sure if I understand the question. Is that meaning? Is that what I I saw when I'm was standing there? Well, the photograph is capturing it in you know in, in a particular way for sure um whether that the photograph was accurate to the, that moment um it's hard to hard to say the as I'm painting, I'm not actually trying to, um, my goal is not to have it be accurate necessarily to the scene. My goal is to make a painting. So it's okay for it not to be, um, Exactly. Um, as it was when I was standing there. Nice, bright. Orange. Get that in there. And
right? Because the idea is not to be, um, is to express something about what we saw, not necessarily be um, copying it like, like a, a, as in a photojournalist might. Look at all that green. It's cool. I think it needs some brown as well. Oops, not that dark. I should have tested it before. Let's see. That's better. Question. Mm -hmm. Do you use alcohol on all the paintings and more than once per painting? Oh, that's a good question. No, I don't use them on all of the paintings and use it on all the paintings. And yes, I if, if I feel like I need um, to um, set the pastel in to the um, paper more, I, I might go one, you know, a, more than once with the alcohol. Yeah. So right here where the sun, where the, on the water, it's kind of brown right there. You get that gold. And that reflection is coming right at us. And some blue mixed in both vertical and horizontal strokes for the water. Just a little darker. Better. to be a little bluer. And maybe, maybe that, but that's, I also want that, that hint of green too. Love that. Let's see if we can get something a little more like that.
a little darker. Island shape. Whoop. That was not in the right spot. Okay, I'm holding out on you because I, I know that when I get in here and get that nice light, it's going to make it really pop. And I also know that that's super fun to do. <laughs> so I'm waiting, and then I'm also going to get that, that sky in and a little bit more on those, those God rays. All right, so let's go ahead and get that light, nice light in there. And um, I'm going to use this nice, creamy, this is a Mount Vision pastel. Nice and soft. Do you mirror the same colors from the sky and the water, or do you do, or do you go a bit darker in value? Um, I guess I, I start with the same colors, and then if I feel like I need to go a little darker, um, generally speaking, that, that would be the case, that the reflection would be slightly, slightly darker. general rule of thumb yeah. rule of thumb but i you know rules are made to be broken so keeping that in mind that kind of clear paula had a question is the is the reflection lighter or darker than what you're mm -hmm. reflecting Let's see, I want to get... get that really bright yellow in there. Some clean. me about get that orange glow right there on that right here It does extend all the way out there. And I need to get that horizon nice and sharp.
I also want to get it a little lighter right there. It's good. Okay, let's see if I can get some of these rays going. Carving out a few more of these shapes. These layers are so beautiful, and layers of clouds. All right, so now I want to get that blue sky going and it's not blue, is it? So what is it? It's kind of a greenish, it's kind of this. And I want a bit of pink. Starting to get there. Now some of these little shapes. Oops, that's not the right one.
Well, it's starting to come together. Sunset scenes are really fun to do. You can't really make a mistake on them because no one's going to say to you, oh, it doesn't look like that. You know, only if you have show them the, the reference photos. The skies have infinite variety, so pretty much play around with it. Up in there, that's an inter that's interesting color right in there. What is that? It's kind of got a little bit of a lavender cast to it. And on this that gold. rays have to kind of work on those get those to be want them to be and then there's this nice Yeah, cool. Is anybody painting along with me or what's going on out there? Quite nice. It is. It it, it is, but it it it, it definitely um, took a while for it to really happen. But that's okay. At its yuck stage. Yuck is okay. Hang along. What? The Diana's painting along. Oh, good. Great. Excellent. Nice to have company. Okay. 
there. So now I want that super white there now, right there. I'm really having to press hard and the, the, the pastel is nice and thick right there. And because I've set the pastel in with the alcohol wash, I'm really able to do that. Really go in there and get it. And nice and bright and clean. Wind chimes are going today. I'm just going to go ahead and clean up a few little shapes here and there. Get this rim lighting. That. A little much over here. Keep that simpler. And as I'm looking at the colors, the 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 colors in my painting are not exactly um, what's in the photograph. That's okay. We don't necessarily have to have be. 100% faithful to the photograph. More important than than that is does my painting work as a whole? And that that's what I'm really looking to do when I'm doing a piece. Do the relationships in the painting work? And a little bit of work to do on the horizon to clean that up. There's a little light glow right at the horizon. It's a little bit brighter right on right on that edge. So I'd, I I kind of want to say something about that. I think it's pretty much got the elements that I want. Might want this a little darker up here just to kind of pull those those god rays down a little bit. It's so amazing. Yeah, that's better. And maybe 
it's a little darker too. Play with that a little bit. All right, I think I'm there. Um, let's put some these guys. The uh, painting on the palette, we could switch to that camera. That way it's squared up a little bit better and easier to see. Okay. Let's see how we did today. Not too bad for, for after having a little break. Not too rusty. Does it look? Let's see. Yeah, 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 I think so. But yeah, so definitely head to the website and check out the sale we're having. It's just, it's a short sale for 10 days on oil painting for anybody and still life and oil. They're really thorough workshops, both of them. And if you're interested in um, busting out those oil paints and getting at some, some uh, landscapes and some still lives, which make for a really rich and kind of never ending subject that you can do any time of year, which is really amazing and great. Um, still life, you have so much control over it. It's so cool, the, the lighting, the, the backgrounds, all of that. It's, and working from direct observation, of course, is such an um, amazing learning experience. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for um, joining us. And we'll be back sometime soon with another uh, free live stream. And I hope some of you guys are sticking around for the critique stream. Uh, monthly people uh, will be added at one, just about 1.30. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Have a great weekend, you guys. See you soon.